start recording and stop. Try this. Oh, this is part of the template. Okay. If I was saying this date is at least I change it. It's not fourteen and sixteen. Oh, forget about it. Okay, so how are you all doing? Yeah, yeah, hang it in there. <laughs> Everything is fine. Good, good, good. All right, hey, Miriam, how are you? Jack, what's up? Okay. It's still hurting, it's still hurting. It just took a couple of uh, Tylenol, not Tylenol, uh, Edwill, I guess. Kumar, how are you, man? All right. Um, so everybody here. All right. So um, let's get started. Let's get uh, something straight. Uh, we're going to do this about the Fibonacci tool. This is what, what I have it here, right? Um, let's delete this. All right, um, we'll uh, pick a random pair, for example, let's say uh, euro pound. We usually don't, you know, do the analysis on that. So let's pick that pair. Just want to show you something. And then I'll remove all these levels, forget about these levels, make it plain. Uh, but in fact, um, this is a monthly. Whoops, it has everything. All right, forget it. Even if it does, you know, who cares? I'll remove this one. <coughs> okay, so uh, let's get started. Now, the Fibonacci. Fibonacci is, do you know where the, what is this name? Where this name come from? Anybody know about it? What, is, what do you mean by Fibonacci? What is it? Is it a name or? Right, you got it, Marian. Good. It is a Fib uh, I think it's Leonardo Fibonacci was his name, Italian dude, right? And um, he was a mathematician. He was, uh, you know, studying pyramids and this and that. And then he, you know, uh, fumbled upon this um, this uh, discovery. And it's, it's called Fibonacci series, basically, right? Uh, I don't want to go, um, you know, too back in in the detail that you know how all these uh, Fibonacci numbers shows up in the nature and this and that. You know, I can do a video on that later sometime. Uh, but today, the basic is that you know it, it, the, what is Fibonacci series is that uh, you have like, uh, let's say one, and then, you know the Fibonacci series, right? And then. Um, The next number is also is zero, one. Then you add zero plus one. The next number comes is one. Let me let me see. You know, put the zero here as well, right? So the first number you have is like, for example, is starting from the zero. The series starts from zero. Is it zero or O? I probably made O, huh? No, it, it is zero. So zero, one. Then you add zero into one. The next following number in the series comes which is one. Now the last two numbers you add one and one, then the next number would be in the series two, right? And then the last two numbers, add the last two numbers, one and two is gonna be five. Then add five and three, the last two numbers, you will get eight. And then add both last two numbers, five and eight, you get 13. And so on and so forth, you know, 34, 15, uh, 55, 89, and this and that. So, so this is how this series is. What is the beauty of this series? You take any two numbers, for example, down the road, if you had, you know, 5 and 8, it's 13, 13 and um, uh, 8, I think it's 34 and 34, you know, next number is 55. So if you have the calculator, if you see any two numbers, for example, you take 55 and 34. So you divide 55 into 34. So 55 divided by 34, you will see a number 1.618. Okay. 
And if you do the opposite, means if you divide 34 by 55, you will get 0.618. Okay. Now you take you if you can continue with this series for thousands and thousands of numbers, and any two numbers you take consecutive two numbers and divide into each other, you will get the same answer: 1.618 and 0.618. All right. Now, so this is the number 0.618 is that that's what they call is golden mean, uh, and this is the uh, the major number. Like I said, I don't want to go into too much detail. You know how you open up a circle and then rectangle, also uh, you know uh, the perpendicular and this and that. It's all mathematic, so uh, that's not our uh, objective here. But this is a main number. So this is basic series, and the beauty of the series, the main uh, concept of the series, that you take any two numbers, divide into each other. Either you get 1.618 or 0 0.618. So for example, uh, the the tool we have, this this tool here, okay, this is the part of the MT4, and you have all these numbers. I I uh, add all these numbers, and uh, most of the people do that. All right, but where did all these numbers come from? Anybody knows? Yeah, Marion, you have any idea all these numbers, where they come from? Okay, you now you know that um, the 0.618, right, is that the thing. is divided by 100, it becomes 61.8%, right? Out of 100, for example, you can see the two. We have this, 0, 0, and then we have the other end. Is 100 right so if this move we are measuring this move for example for forget that that move the last move is this right this is the bottom this is the top so move starts from here right and goes all the way there whoops the opposite for example this is so we need to see that you know how much it retains back or it just covers. So this is, for example, this is zero, this is 100, or you can call it one, you know, as one unit. And a half would be what? 0.5, right? Or 50, 0.50, right? So a little bit more than half is 61.8% out of 100, okay? Or you can say if you call, call it one, then it is only 0.618, right? So we call it zero to 100, out of that zero to hundred unit, this line is sixty one point eight percent. Percent means out of hundred. Per means out of cent means hundred. So percent out of one hundred. So this is all you know from zero to one uh, hundred. This is hundred. So this retracement, if the price comes down here, so it is sixty one point eight percent of means that sixty one point eight uh, part of this whole move. Okay, a little bit more than half it recovers. So this is a retracement tool, and this is what what it means by sixty one percent. But tell me, what is this number? Seventy eight point six percent. Where did that come from? Why not only seventy percent or eighty percent? You know, seventy eight point six. Why do we put this seventy eight point six percent here? Why not seventy nine, even or or eighty? Anybody knows where that seventy eight percent comes? Marian, do you know that? It is related to, but you know, no, no. But how, where do, where you come up with the calculation? It's seventy-eight point six percent. Where it come from? Mathematically, these are all mathematic. These are numbers, right? We call numbers mathematic. No, no, no. You don't, you don't do. It. You know, mathematic. You don't say in English. Mathematic. You use calculator. <laughs> Okay, no, it's a square root of 0.618. Do you know what a square root is? A square root of 4 is what? Anybody? 2, right? Okay, so if you go, if you pick up your calculator and you go 0 0.618 and hit the square root button, then it will give you 0.786. Got it? All right, now if you go. Um, uh, you know what reciprocal is? Means you divide one by any number. That's called reciprocal. Okay. So now we use reciprocal of 0.618 means 
1 divided by 1 divided by 0.618. So what do you get? 1.618. Our famous, other famous number, which is a part of the Fibonacci, right? The when two numbers you take and you divide into each other. So we have that somewhere here, you know, down here. Uh, so, and, and um, let me see. Um, it's too much. Too much. Okay. Now, if you, if you do a reciprocal of 0 0.786, means one divided by 0 0.786. One divided by 0 0.786 is equal to 1.27, which is our extension number. I always tell you, right? The one 127 and 1.618. These are the extension numbers. Okay. So what I'm showing is that all these numbers are related in. Uh, uh, each other in term of uh, mathematic they are either now uh, for example uh, 0.618 times 2 what do you come up with 1.236.236 number over 23.6 percent line right you come up with that now um At the square, the square, the 0.618. Uh, I, I didn't do it for a long time, so I forgot. 0.618 square means you multiply 0.618 to 0.618. So, you know, times 0.618, then what do you get? You get 0.382. That's another, the other number right here, this one. Right? And 50% is just the 50% of the whole thing. That's not a Fibonacci number. It's just, you know, if it is... One from here to here, half is we call it 50 percent. Simple as that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it, Morgan. 0.786. Uh, the square root of that is 88.6 percent, which is right here. 88.6 percent next to 78 percent, right? So uh, if you go to reciprocal of that, um, 1.88, 1. And I mean, uh, one divided by 0.886, you will get 1.128, which is right here. Understand, and if you take the the fifty uh, fifty percent um, the square root of fifty percent is point seven zero seven, which is right here in between sixty one percent and seventy eight percent, and the reciprocal of point seven zero seven would be one forty one point four percent. So now you know all these numbers are either reciprocal, square, or uh, square root of each other. Okay, so this is how we come up with this Fibonacci 2. <laughs> I don't know what is that, Morgan. <laughs> I'm not a mathematician. I, I know a little bit, you know. I'm always, you know, math and physics were my favorite subjects in my studies days. But, uh, yeah, so I understand this, you know, this is how uh, all of these numbers are related to each other, right? So now you know that what is the golden mean is 0 0.618, and starting from there, uh, you know, it becomes the, all this number uh, comes one by one, and then we plot in, in, within this thing. But how do you add these numbers to your two, and how you remove it? Uh, do you know, uh, Marian, do you know that? How you add a number in the two? Okay. And uh, how do you get this price here? Do you know that in the price next to the level? That's, uh, you know, I have it like 61.8% and it tells you the number. That's it. Everybody else knows, right? This, uh, you know, percent sign and a dollar sign. And then it gives you the number. So, so far, so good. You know, I don't have to show you that. So, it's very easy. You just go into properties and um, in the fib level. And then this is how it is. See, I have the, you know, the level and in front of that percent dollar. And that's it. And you can just add the number. If you want another one, you just put the, the levels uh, price there. And then percent wise and percent sign and a dollar sign. And that's it. You can continue adding whatever you want to add. That's no big deal. Uh, okay, get out of here. All right. So this is how it is. But how do you use it? You have only one. Where is the other tool, by the way? You have two Fibonacci tools, right? This is the one we reuse. For a retracement, we have another one. It's called expansion, right? We have extension, expansion, whatever. 
usually it is not shown when you open a new mt4 okay so some of the new people here um so i'm gonna just show it to you this see this is a retracement fibonacci retracement tool you have the you, you have to right click on it and then customize and Fibonacci uh, expansion will be on this side. So you select that and you go insert and it will come here. If you want to remove, like for example, if this is right here, expansion, right? If I want to remove, I'll pr press this and it will come down here. But I want to add it, so, you know, because this is a very important uh, thing, right? So it is called uh, Fibonacci expansion and you must have it. So now you bring it to this side so you can see it here right there right this is for a retracement so once the move is done it retraces itself right sometimes 38 percent sometimes 50 percent 61 78 whatever so this tool measures the retracement which one the first one the one we just we were working on and this is a three pointer tool this is expansion this is for the targets this uh, you measure the um, the move in question and then you what uh, basically you, uh, you you're going to measure or see the target or how far the current uh, wave or, or, or move is going to be compared to a pre previous move for example this is the previous move let's say this one well after the move uh, after the retracement actually this we cannot say the retracement here and let me see i'm gonna go weekly uh, for example this right this is a higher high for this so we will say this was the move and this is the retracement right okay so now the prices start going up and we know that it's a small head and shoulder pattern this is the left uh, shoulder this is the right i mean this is the head this is the right shoulder you see this nice after you know on, on support you have a nice head and shoulder pattern here, which requires an up move. Fine. You know, you first bullish candle here and you'll see, okay, it's going up. So how far? That's the question. So this is the tool that we use. And this is a three pointer. And why three pointer? This move, we will measure the your upcoming move. We will, we want to see how far it will go. And so, uh, obviously, the move is not there so, to measure. So we, we compare to uh, this move, which already happened. Okay, so which, which one? From here to here. All right, so we're going to measure the upcoming move with in terms of this one, that the move already happened, this one and the new wave started from here so we will measure this move compared to we will going to compare this and measure this move that how far or how big it is compared to this one is it equal to this one or it is going to be more than that and those two extension beyond 100 percent for example again this is zero this is 100 so if you say okay 100 percent would be from starting to the same length of this move which you can easily do this okay um, you know this is uh, you know it's gonna be uh, man. for example here right so this is 100 percent but what are the other levels and important levels uh fibonacci numbers that comes beyond this 100 percent so you know so we can uh, be aware of those numbers and take uh, make our move or take uh, the trades or whatever we need to be doing um, those important two numbers beyond 100 percent is 127 and 1.618 right we just measured that these are the you know 127 is the reciprocal of uh, the square root of uh, 1.618 and also uh, reciprocal of 0.787 so that's the next number and obviously uh, 1.618 is the square root of 0.618 so these are the two expansion numbers very important um if it is 100 percent, then probably 127 percent is somewhere here 1.618 some, somewhere here. so we add that those numbers in this tool and we how you use it that you first you pull the fib from here to here right this is our uh come uh the the move that we are going to compare uh, the current or upcoming upcoming move right so this is point a b and then this is a third point 
pointer you will place right here in the beginning of the move and now you want to see that you know how far it goes that the targets are 127 percent and 1.618 percent and usually uh, this number i i always have this okay it's 141.4 percent so these are the final targets let me show you a diagram and you should all have it this is how this tool works and uh, yeah we call it like a b is equal to c d and it's exactly at this level it is equal to c d uh, a b right this is c and d uh, it is 100 percent means it's equal but it could be a b is equal to c d pattern is you know it's this is 127 percent or 1.618 percent so usually what happened is that uh, if you have uh, moved from a to b and then either 61 percent or 78 percent you know uh, for a girdle pattern and after the girdle pattern you measure that tool from here to here third point comes here and then the move starts and you will watch it that you know if it is breaking this point it's going above it um uh, b point this one here right and if it goes above then it will go to usually to 100 percent and if from there it goes to 127 percent if break that uh, 1.618 percent giving all these uh, other snr levels that we plot on our chart and then we see the which one is coming very close to these fibonacci number as well because then it has an effect of uh, magnetism right <laughs> become magnet if you have 1.618 and uh, there is a big strong snr number as well then uh, that level will become very magnetic and the price usually go and kiss that area so um, this is what this um, where it goes this is the expansion tool actually right this is how you use it um, where is the other chart I'm good. okay now this expansion tool and retracement tool you see when you're going uh, Elliott wave for example let's look at this chart here right this is wave one two three four five um five impulse wave going up and then three wave coming down abc yeah it's very easy to say that yeah this is a phenomena this is what happened but how that we know what is a and you know how far goes two and how far goes three and you know where the fourth is going to get stop and then how far after that the fifth is going to go so this these are the areas these are the the moves that are you know like in history if you we go back and we see that they happen again and again, you know, in the same fashion. And then based on that information, we measure them and then come up with the very approximate, um, you know, calculation that we can, if um, your wave one is this, then wave two would be this. And from there, wave three should be this far. It should go this far and then wave four, it is, you know, this much and then wave five and then you know this wave a uh, of the retracement usually comes back to the wave four area then the wave b it goes up around the high of wave three make a head and shoulder kind of pattern and then wave c comes to around 50 61 percent or 78 percent then you have a higher time frame wave one and wave two after all these mumbo jumbo happening on for example let's say this whole thing you see a one two three four five abc on a, an hourly chart which will be finishing only wave one and two of a daily chart followed by a big huge wave three like this one from two to three right uh, consists of five waves and each wave will have all sub waves and all that so this is you know Elliott wave and harmonic pattern now harmonic patterns i explained already um, and you all probably know that they are exactly Elliott waves just and you know you look at it in a different angle that's all okay I'm showing here there's a straight wave one wave two but usually this is the area when the price goes up in five waves one two three four five and then comes back like a b c around 61 percent or 78 percent making a girdle a bullish girdle or a bad pattern in this area okay um i don't know if i have those chart here um oops nope yeah like this one you see here 
this is uh this this is how it is this is wave one and then you have abc correction around either i said you know i wrote here bullish bad it could be a gutly as well okay gutly or bad these are the two retracement patterns okay when you are retracing a move not going beyond the starting point but staying within or above uh, this starting point which is x here and then breaking this the end of wave one okay if you go in that direction so this wave two would be just a retracement this would be not a retracement to this drop this will be an impulse wave and this will be called an extension and we will use uh, the other expansion tool fib expansion tool to measure this length this uh, wave three then the wave four will be a retracement and then wave five again will be an impulse wave uh, and we will measure that with the other tool so these both tools here you use the measurement uh, retracement tool then wave three expansion tool wave four retracement tool wave five expansion tool Okay, so those all of those tools are used to measure these Elliott waves. Um, <clears throat> okay, now so far, Marion, any question about the tool itself? You know that where the number comes from, and all those numbers are related. Uh, you know how to add them, and you know take it out if you don't need. And also, you, <clears throat> uh, I have uh, given you the you know that. Uh, Template your USD monthly chart and all those templates made for bad and butterfly and you know <laughs> This and that they are all on one page So you can just open up and apply that and whatever the pattern you need you just pick it up from there Whatever the Fibonacci uh, tool you need. Okay, so you cannot see uh, all the other levels uh, Unrelated levels at that point if you want to measure just girdly So you want to see the where's the 61% and 78 percent That's it. Not all those you know, nonsense numbers, right? Okay, so once you're asking, so once point D is above point D, what does that mean? <laughs> All right, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, not once it is uh, above, but if you look at it, if you understand a little bit of Elliott wave, you will know that this wave will be move going above. Okay, you will know in advance. You will have the idea. Not necessarily that will happen, but usually you will know exactly. All right. Um, anyone, Marion, uh, uh, my, my sound is okay or is it in and out? Because Bella is having problems, so I don't know. Is it, is it, is it fine? It's not in and out or cutting or anything? All okay. All right. No, so Bella, it is, um, let me just give her the private message here. It is only you. Okay, so I send her the message, you know, maybe her computer or something. Anyway, so yeah, uh, if like I said, uh, Marianne, if you know uh, the Elliott wave a little bit, um, then you will understand uh, that it is you know going up or down because, like I said, you, if you can count somewhere for you know for example wave one, two, three, four, or maybe completely five, then you expect a wave A coming uh, in the territory of wave the last wave four. Uh, for example, if I want to give you an example, I will go to USD. It's a clear. Um, don't worry, Ahmed. You will see the recording. Not a problem. Hold on just a minute. For example, this. If you look at this. This big uh, thing, for example, this is wave one, and then a big side wave, wave two, right? And then it goes wave three, big one, right? And then wave four, and uh, it's like an ending diagonal, very, very painful, uh, slow move to the upside for wave five. Once that finish, wave one, two, three, four, five, I'm not showing here, Elliott wave here. Uh, give me a chart. Can I chart turning to it? I don't want to mess up that chart. Let me see. Um, Weekly, weekly, and the indices and the US dollar index. 
I'll turn to weekly and let's see if I open this and uh, maybe I'll turn it to no I'll do weekly and I'll do this so maybe here you can see that if ABC correction for example this could be a, a B and then I would say from here this is wave one here right and this is wave two so measure this okay so this one came little more than 50% down, very close to 61%, right? So 61% A, B, C, uh, you know, A, B, C, small correction. Uh, I mean, 61% correction, but the B, A, B, C is not very clear. But then you have wave 3 coming in. I just showed you the phenomenon, right? So wave 3 usually goes to 1.618 of wave 1, right? So wave 3, I would say it's here, right? Let me see. If I can, oops, if this is wave one here, so you see, if you have something like that, and if you, you, your eye can catch it, then you start measuring these things. And if you can measure and pinpoint that what's happening, then you can really uh, understand that, you know, what's coming up, and you can trade very nicely. So, for example, this is wave three here, and this is wave four here, right? And this is wave five here. So it, if we just measure this one, this is, a, you know, 61%. Now, if I can, you see here, this is the Elliott wave, wave three. This is how it happens. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, correction, wave two. And then it goes in five waves, one, two, three, four, five, to finish up a wave three. But how far? Wave 3 usually breaks the channel upper tier and goes for FE 1.618 of the wave 1. Now we need a, to make a new channel or whatever. So it is it, it, supposedly going to um, go for wave uh, uh, 1.618 of wave, wave 1. 1.618% 1 of wave 1. Means uh, equal to that would be 100%, but wave 3 should be a more 0.618 more than the wave one so how we measure that we measure with the fibonacci uh, expansion tool so we go there and then we see that if this wave three from here to here is that the case so we oops where the two go here's the two so we're gonna place this this is wave one from here to here right and then this wave two is here. So you see wave three went a little bit beyond 1.618, but it, it went up to 1.618. So that confirmed that this is wave three. And you can see the small wave one, two, and then three, four, you know, dip this wave four and this five, finish up wave three. Right? So this is how you measure wave three now wave four is a retracement so we don't use this tool again you know we you we need to use the other one the retracement tool to measure the wave four so i'm gonna open up a little bit you know it's just shrinking so wave four now here again we go back to this diagram and see we will try to see that how how much we need wave four retracement wave four retracement um How come I didn't write it here and end up to create? Oops, uh, where it says, man. All right, it, uh, somehow I don't have it here. We have three, I know. Okay. Um, anyway, wave four is usually, maybe it's, it's some other diagram. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just getting confused here. Maybe here. Wave three, wave four should be, let's see, it's 38 percent, but where does it say I have, uh, I don't know, with some other diagram. Anyway, let's go back here.
one what are you talking about here right all right see the, the thing is that this a correction is also uh, you have to see that you have to understand the whole thing that you know how it works um for example uh, a correction is a b c correction right anything for example any uh, correction is a b c so sometimes what happens is that you have this basically i would say this a b a small a b and then wave c is the big one and it is only a correction and wave c usually comes with the five waves so it if you measure from here you may have the calculation or may not let's see from here that's why this elliot wave is now see if you measure from there then wave two Calculation is is a little bit crooked. It's only 38% retracement, which is not the characteristic of wave two. So uh, you have to see that you know uh, what happened in the background, all the way in you know in the back. If it is a correction only. Now, if I go uh, you know monthly chart of this uh, USDX, this is all I have. So you can see this is all correction. It's like A B C, right? And even C is also A B C in three wave. Here you can see it's wave A, we can see small b, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, wave C, correction finish. Then you are seeing this A and B and C I'm just showing you, right, uh, on the daily chart. It's A, B, C. It could be just A, and then you will have a B, and then a big C come down. Anything can happen, right? So if you have three wave, that three wave, for example, uh, here, see, A, side wave b and c but this a b c is not uh, the whole correction it is only wave a then you have b and then you have wave c so you have to measure also in time if i go in detail then it will be uh, you know i'm gonna be off track <laughs> that would be an elliot wave <laughs> uh, 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 webinar rather than the Fibonacci. <laughs> So that's why I'm, I'm going to stick to uh, this um, Fibonacci uh, thing, okay? So how to measure these things. So if that's why I'm starting from here because I can show you this. If, if that is A and B and this is C, out of C, you have this five wave correction. So one, two, and then three wave four. Wave four usually is only 38%. So we use this tool again to measure wave four from uh the beginning of wave three to this uh with you know the whole wave three and then see wave four where it comes exactly so it came exactly back to 38 percent right so this is it's very short it you know it, it supposedly it's like a b c sometimes uh, it becomes a triangle right uh very nasty uh, very painful triangle so you, what it does is that it's A, B, C, D, E, you know, on the side, and then it goes up. And, and the triangles are in fourth wave. It's very common. But in this case, it was a very fast. Why? Because there's something called uh, a law of um, alternation in Elliott wave. And that is that if you have a wave 2, a fast drop, then you will have a nasty triangle on in wave four. And if you have a wave two, a side wave, long, painful wave two, then you will have a fast drop in wave four. So it looks like that we have a very, you know, side wave. You see this wave one and then wave two is, is a long, painful, uh, you know, slow uh, wave. And that's why we have a fast wave four uh, triangle exactly, but exactly at 38%. All right. And then from there, um, I think I just remember that it should be, let me see if I can, um, uh, just a minute, if it is not here, it's the same thing. See here, this is wave one, A, B, C, two, wave three is 1.618 of wave one. And wave four, it, it can come in different ways. It's like flat correction, irregular, you know, uh, uh, flat, and regular flat, expanded flat, um, a zigzag. 
So there are too many uh, formation in Elliott wave. Okay. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into that, but usually the 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 uh, the measurement is 38 percent, 38.2 percent. Whatever it is, it, it stays within that. Sometimes if it is a zigzag, which is a fast drop, that it can go to you know 50 percent or sometimes even 61 percent. But 90 percent of the time, you will find wave four around 38 percent. And this is the case here. Okay, so it is a fast drop, 38 percent. But then wave five, we go back to the same, and then you see that wave five should be around 0.618 of wave three. Okay, wave three was 0.618 more than wave one, but wave five again, it's only should be only 0.618 of wave three, means shorter than wave three. Okay, shorter than wave three. Okay, Marian, uh, if you don't see the Elliott wave, uh, okay, tell me, which pair uh, have you tried anywhere in any pair? Just tell me so I can open the chart, and then I'll show it to you. That way, you know, you will know that, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, prepared for, <laughs> from the beginning. I will show you then how you can, because I don't know which one you're going to suggest right now, right? So go ahead and suggest me anything. And if I can see it, because you, sometimes you don't you really, you don't see any any wave or any patterns. So that's why I leave those pairs alone when you don't see anything. Why bother with those pairs? They, they are ranging and they are doing some nasty things on what we call is a complex correction. Complex corrections are account destroyers. Okay. Um, completely, you know, messed. <laughs> GB, you, you're talking about pound Aussie chart? Right, Jack? Miriam, is it okay if I, Jack is saying that go with the pound Aussie? All right, now you're saying the pound Aussie too. Wow, everybody loves pound Aussie, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, let's go open a pound Aussie chart. And then we see if we can make any sense there. Or if not, then at least we will see the measurements, right? On, and remember, I just explained you two tools, retracement and expansion. Retracement, the major two points are 0.618 and 78%. Sometimes the move starts from 50% as well. Those are bad patterns uh, usually. And I'll show it to you. And then the price, the retracement. Now, the price um, breaking the point, uh, I mean, going beyond the starting point. Uh, so that then you have to use expansion tool. And expansion, those two levels are 127 and 1.618, right? All right. So. Giving that, we go on pound Aussie chart. Now, see, Elliot, the finding Elliott waves are difficult on 40 minute and 20 minute. They're, that's, they're, they're small charts. They are very small, like one hour chart or four hour chart. You want to see, see uh, the higher time frame charts. Like, you know, you can see here completely. This is like wave one, two, three, four, five. That's wave A. Wave B, I, I just told you the correction, it goes back to last wave four. Wave four was this, it went up over there, last wave four, and then poof, again drop. You know, the, the, the things are there, so I'm going to show it to you. But the thing is that 40 minute chart, sometimes you see, sometimes the measurements are there, calculations are there. Uh, for example, the bouncing, the entry points, if usually it comes back in the wave around 50%, 61%, and you know the 61% is a very powerful number. So you can take it, but looking at the Elliott wave all together, you know, from wave one, two, three, four, five, and ABC corrections, you have to see the higher time frame, even though it is in the shorter time frame as well, but very hard to see uh, and very hard to understand. Uh, higher time frame gives you more. What is this chart? Okay, um, here. Okay, this drop from here, see this is a weekly chart. This drop here is a very straight drop. And from here, if you can see, all I can count from this point to this point is three waves only. It's just big one wave. This is small two, three. So we can call it A, B, C. Okay, this is A, B, C correction. So this whole thing makes it wave A. And you can say this is a 
I'm just going fast and random so that you know I can test myself that how good I am. Whatever I see, I'm just marking. Whoops, not this. Uh, whoops, not this. A, B, and then a small c will make this wave A of A correction. Like I said, big chart, sometimes you all you see is a big correction. Keep correction after correction after correction. So if this is with A, this small, you see, A, B, C, this again, small A here. Then the price went A, then B, and then C. Very small. You could, you, if you open up on a daily chart, you'll see. So this is B because I'm, I'm what I'm showing you that, you know, I can recognize them very easily. And this drop is with C. And this becomes wave B. Okay. Now, let's measure from here to here. What is this? Thirty-eight percent, right? Okay, I'm going to show you something now. Thirty-eight percent. After that, you see this bullish engulfing candle with no wicks whatsoever. And that is a sign, very strong sign that it is going again, maybe. And this is the high here, the SNR level also. And we have a very bullish candle here. We ended with no wick whatsoever. So, you know, it's a strong sign that we are going up. And we did, right? Now, if you look, AB is equal to CD pattern. Where I just showed you the chart, for example. Where it go? This? Oh, you're right here, right here. You see this? This is a Gertle uh, calculation, but not necessarily. I'm just showing you. But what are the extended targets? 100%, 127%, 1.618%. 1 so now you can put the targets. You want to see that, you know, where these targets coming in. 100%. So you use this tool. You place this here. And then you place this, this, right? And then you notice something. Do you, can you tell me what you notice? <clears throat> notice and tell me what is it. Where did it go exactly? Anybody? Let me remove this, um, this tool here. Now can you see where it go? Before turning? All right, exactly. You see, it went at, straight to 100%. This 127 is this. And then at 100%, what it posted, as soon as it hit the 100%, let me expand it. As soon as it hit the 100% level here, this is a B is equal to CD, 100% correction finish. What it posted here. You see this? This is a reversal big doji or shooting star, right? So that is a very strong sign that we are making a turn from there. It's 100% correction. Finish, A, B, C, three waves. You know, um, this was A, this is B, and I would say this is C. So that's A, B, C correction, some sort of. If you go on a monthly, you will see the background, what it is, what not, you know. Uh, so again, um, we are doing measurements here with using the fifth tool. I'm not, you know, trying to um, do the Elliott web. <laughs> Otherwise, it will be completely different webinar. So after that, if it, this is a correction, that's fine. We are turning. So, we, you know, where we are turning, usually the targets, you have to see the, you know, if it is going to be impulse wave or um, you know, um, um, where this chart is, hold on this more. Okay, this is right. Let me let me bring it the first chart here. Okay, it's not even a first chart, but this is the one we're doing. Okay, this is a monthly chart. So now, um, well, for example, this monthly chart is Pandaji, right? Okay, so I, the thing that I was showing you was this. A, B, and C, right? But notice that this C is 100% of this calculation, but it was also a 61%. 
because you, you this is a this was a complete retracement of this drop this big huge drop here so you see long time charts if you see then you will understand the Elliott wave the uh, you know if it if it is uh, impulse wave or um, you know uh, correction uh, or uh, you know you can calculate really easy and within that you come up with the 40 minute chart or whatever that if once you know that we are going this year because this becomes magnetic right remember I, I just explained to you if you measure let me measure it on this one so that you will understand what I'm talking about and where this number is coming from you see this uh, from this to this drop here big drop 61% which is a powerful golden mean is coming exactly at 2.22 and this 100% is coming what? Um, 2.20 Right, so they they both numbers are very good numbers strong numbers a b is equal to c d exactly at 100 percent coming exactly where the 61 percent of big this big drop so how hard it is it was actually to just continue trading in the in that direction and if you uh, remember or not i don't know if how many of you remember that i gave this target when we were way down here i said we're gonna go up i have those charts i said we're gonna go up and then from there we're gonna drop so this was my target and we reached there very nice and clean okay i'll show you this uh, you know uh, bella probably remember ted or you know that you know this was uh, our target in paranasi remember uh, going to the upside <laughs> uh, 2.24 was my target basically and we went 2.2377 okay um for example if um, I want to show you guys then where do I go okay, if I go here I go here maybe I don't know if this computer has those old charts where's pound Ozzy? I can't see it. oh uh, Okay, this was, you know, my target was up, but this the calculation was all off. It was from here and A, B is equal to C, D, I already marked here. See, A, B, you see that? I have this mark. This is A, this is B, and then we're going for C, 100% is right there, 2.20, I just showed you. And how long ago, you know? So that was, and the 61%, instead of um, uh, measuring from here to here, I just measured from there, but then later charts, you know, I, I fixed that thing and then and, you know, it was showing from here to here. But it was like, you know, uh, a, a, B, and then we were going for C. The target was right here and we reached that target. And this was a long time ago. Okay. Jack, what do you mean the other leg down? The current leg? Yeah, the, the chart in front of you, the current lag is right here. But the thing is that uh, we need it. Like I'm keep telling you that you know we need a retracement. But this Brexit thing is is killing this pound, you know, this pair. But right now, uh, for example, we are uh, pound Aussie. You know, with the Aussie weakness, the chart that we have now, uh, with the help of that chart, if the chart kicks in, then we may have see some retracement to this chart here. This is a recent chart. Right. It is a current chart, by the way. So now, if this is A, B, C, you know, it went up there, right? But you see that we are we drop also the same fashion. We have only three waves showing here, right? A, then B, and then C. Let's measure that. Let's use this tool the opposite way. Okay, so let me just 
if I flip it, then you guys will get confused. I'm going to start from here. Okay, from the starting point, this is wave A, right? And then this is, we're going to start, uh, put uh, the place it in the beginning of the wave uh, C. And that would be the end of wave B here, right? And then you see this is 100%, this is 127%. And there is another level which uh, remember 1.128, uh, right? Which is not showing here. Oh come on, man! What happened? Okay. See, uh, quickly I'll show you how to add it. It's like 112.8 is the area actually, and then you go as uh, FE. Oops. Um, FE, it's 1.128 and then percent and dollar sign, right? So that thing will come up with, where did it go? Oh, sorry. I did the opposite, actually. This is where 1.128, and this has to be 112.8. Okay, now it pops in here, right? This is the area. All right, so let's measure that again. That's not the, the very big number. Big number is 127 and 1.618 are the, the major number. But, you know, it's still... There is a, you know, the, uh, it's uh, some sort of uh, Fibonacci number. So we are stopping here. But now let's go and, you know, use the retracement tool as well and see what happens. And where we are now. So retracement tool, I will use like that so that we can read it. Okay. So now you see the 78.6% was here of this drop. And this is 112%, so it's all messed up here, right? It's nothing. So now we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you now that the last, this is expansion, how you use this retracement tool for, uh, the other one is expansion, and this is extension, okay? So I'm going to measure only wave C and see how far it goes as far as this extension goes for this tool. Now, this tool is, um uh retracement is only two pointer the, the wave is this and then the price yeah, we are measuring this one right For the c wave of this uh, abc correction so we're gonna me measure this and then the price goes beyond this point and usually it goes to 1.618 or 1. 1. Uh, point, uh, uh, 127 or 1.6 right 1.27 and 1.618 and those both now uh, both numbers are uh, butterfly pattern this harmonic pattern we call butterfly so it's a small butterfly goes at 127 finishes at 127 percent and the bigger one goes uh, as far as 1.618 percent so right now you can see here this is a pattern that i've been showing you all along and this is what really happened and we finish it okay not this one this one see this is the one i made long time ago using this this is with c of that thing right uh abc correction this was a this is b this is c correction so i pull the fit from here to here the, the the calculation for the butterfly pattern is that if the b point is 78 percent and then the c point is at around 38 percent sometimes it goes to 23 percent but usually it stop at 38 percent then you go to 127 percent of the same fib extension extension not expansion that this tool is called fibonacci expansion tool but this is what the extension levels are extensions are only the, the you know butterfly patterns or crab patterns right so uh, um, those two levels are very important. So this is the one we hit already. This is expansion level. So you measure basically like three waves, uh, three different ways. Um, one, this two, uh, this one as a retracement and extension, extension for the targets. And this Fibonacci is uh, Fibonacci expansion 
is only for the target and and especially in Elliott wave counts in Elliott wave counts all right harmonic pattern you use this extension and butterfly pattern usually comes around 1.618 this pattern uh, you guys know that how uh, far back i have given this pattern this is the same thing right same. yeah if you remember that based on the same calculation you know what i'm just showing it to you this is how i come up with this thing which gave me 4500 pip drop from there to there i made this chart in 24 march just like you know just exactly the same calculation and same thinking uh, which i just showed you that i use uh, you know i use this wave last wave abc you know abc correction the c wave and then expansion i saw that 78 percent and 38 percent but why uh you would say that you know you don't know you know this is what happens uh but i would say that no you do know and why would i say that is because i think this is the harmonic pattern right you see i gave you this chart here this whole package is uh, you know i have given you you have it you see this butterfly pattern you have in the package that i give you in the beginning this is xa this first pullback b point is 78.6 percent okay then the c point goes here by the way where go my um webinar thingy oh right here okay i lost it okay so now you see in this diagram this is a butterfly pattern okay x a 78 percent c point usually c point i i wrote it down here this is point c is you uh, uh, equal to 38 percent or you know 288 percent of this same x a move but usually if the same fib you use the same fib and it goes to either 38 percent most of the time or 23 percent time uh, percent line sometimes in case of this B pullback, it's at 78% because it's a deep pullback, then it doesn't go to 23% line, it stays around 38%. And then from there, it turns and comes all the way to either 127% or 1.618%. The first level was 127% extension of XA all the way down here. Right? And that is exactly what happened here. And, um, the chart I showed you a long time ago, it ended up like this, straight down. No hanky panky. Right? Now, another chart that I'm, I'm working on right now is the other one, which is this. And this one showing some more downside. This is a calculation of a bad pattern because if bad pattern, for example, if I go back here and I'll look for a bad pattern. Uh, calculation which is bullish crap. this okay this requires that the b point should should be between 38 percent or 50 percent not more than that and and the the pattern before the b point was must be 78 percent for butterfly pattern right but for a bad pattern it should be around 50 percent most of the time so let you know let's say this one if you measure this uh, tool from all the way in the bottom and then go all the way up then you notice that 50 percent is right here exactly the price came to 50 percent then the price went to 23 percent line exactly to the pip right and now dropping so this is also a big possibility that this price action will finish a bad pattern which requires the final touch is uh, should be 88 percent of the same fib right and then also a b c d a b equal to c d pattern the calculation is also coming 127 is in the same vicinity this you see this tool here this one okay so the 100 percent is here 127 is here so one of the level of ab is equal to cd pattern that's 127 x you know expansion level is coming exactly at the area of a bad pattern finishing so this is also a big possibility so either we're gonna either kick in 
uh, this pattern will kick in and then we go back to this if you're going to the upside so we you know this is the station this is the station if we like i said you know we always go and stop at the bus station and then we make a move when we make a move we should know that where we are going uh, doesn't matter up or down as long as you know where we are going if we are going up then we are going to these areas either this low and these two lows if you are going down now you know that you are going down to finish up a bad pattern around these you know uh, areas so this is um, again you you see this tool here i use from here this is the first butterfly pattern i use only this length here this is the wave c of a correction in this one i started from the beginning point of this abc correction complete correction from here this a b c and 100 percent you know 78 uh, percent is coming here and we poke into it right poke below it actually so it's a good chance that we will simply drop to 88 percent to finish up the bad pattern and it is uh, also we uh, poke below 100 percent of this a b is equal to cd pattern so we, we have a good chance that we will go to this 127 percent so 127 percent and 88 percent is in the same vicinity s point d It's a major point, so it's a big low here. You see, this is the biggest low point here. See, after this drop here, this is the biggest low. And then if once you, you go above these highs, that means the, the turn is imminent. You know, you, you're making the turn. Otherwise, you are just like, you know, low and low and keep coming, keep coming. What do you mean on the other? No, on the other chart. On the other chart means this one. No, no, no. See, that's the thing. You have you. You're talking about this. How do we know that this is X point? This is the 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 end of the wave B. You have to count. Remember, I just counted in in, uh, in the other chart. Here, this is A B C A. This is A B C B, and then this is C. Okay. So e either you use the whole thing or you use this one to measure. These are the two lows here, this one and this one going up, uh, going up here, right? This is the lowest point, and then the this is the B point, uh, the wave B ending here. So this is wave one, this is wave two, this is wave three, this is wave A, this is wave B, wave C. Either you use, uh, you measure against the whole ABC correction, or you measure only for the C correction. So this is how I used first this one, which we got to this point where it's supposed to come at butterfly pattern, finishing a 127% extension of this. But if you use from all the way down here, then the bad pattern correction is still coming. There's still, you know, more to come there. And if it doesn't, and if we kick in from here to go to the upside, then I would say the first target would be this one here. Okay. And uh, but that we also have to see that you know if the patterns and calculations are there, but the thing is that how the, the fundamentals are coming in that is also very very important. Okay, they can change uh, if uh, we have a, any good news about, uh, for example, let's say pound, then we would say that this bad pattern will kick in and it is kicking in, right? So this pattern is kick in, and then we will see pound Aussie going up and fulfilling the uh, you know, this bad pattern uh, you know completion and then first target would be the connect whoops the connecting line of white a and b these these two lines okay so Oh, first uh, level would be this one if we are going to the upside uh, if this pattern is going to play out so this would be you know first we is the starting point the second this is the one um, measure and then if we break that then it will be the the third first, let's say third target would be the tl the fourth would be this high this you know the, the next this high so step by step we go and each time we hit these one of these levels we pull back so we have to be careful that you know once we get to this level low here right 
price will come here and then will pull back down to maybe this low here to this high right and then go again hit the tl and dip a little bit then break the tl and then go to this high and then dip a little bit back to this high maybe so this is how we make the uh, the, the wave so that we can go you know one level at a time uh, to the upside for example here you see this one if you draw this see this is the high here let me see here this is small high gave you this bounce this bounce here right then oh man okay now then see this high or should i say you know just keep measuring that this high gave you this bounce all right so this is how it is you know it it it, it hits the higher area and then comes back and test uh, whatever the level it breaks and then keeps going so this is how you use this this one is major, you know the retracement tool is for retracement and extension to 127 and 1.618 for a butterfly pattern butterfly pattern uh, calculation and th this is the tool usually you use in Elliott wave count uh, wave 3 wave 4 uh, I mean wave uh, in wave 5 measurement um, we were using usdx right i just remember to uh, show something there i forgot all right see wave five wave five yeah i i wanted to show you that wave five is usually 61 percent of wave three we never measured that so i just want to do that to see you know, show you that wave five how we did here so we're going to measure wave three so wave three and we will put this here wave four Oh, so this tool, uh, I messed up, man. This is only 100%. Where the other levels, maybe right here. There he is. No, this is not the one, man. The tool, the tool. Uh, okay, here. Oh, right here. Let me grab this one here. Okay. And then... All right, so I'm going to take this one out here and then draw it again at all the levels. And so we, we need 61.8%, uh, which is right here. 50% is this and 61% is right here. So we came very close to the level, never touched it, but we came very close, right? We went above this wave three, which is fine. And uh, this is like an ending, ending uh, diagonal, painful diagonal, you know, slow. And then uh, we came very close to this area. You know, usually 61%, but, you know, it's above 50% and below 61% in, in the vicinity. For wave 5, so it sometimes wave 5 is, uh, what do you call it, like a truncated, which is usually end up below wave 3. It's somewhere here, you know, very shallow and, you know, messed up wave. And then it drops. So that wave five, we call it wave five truncated. Uh, but this is a normal wave five, slow, uh, and it went up there in that same uh, area we supposed to. And then from there it is drops. You know, not quite in the, uh, the the territory of the last wave four, but you can call it wave one. And then this is wave two. I'm calling. And then wave three could be a big wave like wave one two and then three and the four and the five and that will be completing you know wave uh, two of this if this whole thing is wave one then you will have wave two somewhere here for example if i go um want to measure So the 61% is coming here in this area, 50% is here in this area. If you measure this from here only, then you have 60% is coming into this area here. You know, 78% is this high here. So, you know, time will tell where we're going to go, but let's see if we start going to the downside on this USDX so far. You know, it is making this ABC to the upside.
So uh, it's one hour, 15 minutes. My, I don't want to mess up the recording. So th that's what I said. You know, if I go into Elliott Wave, it's going to be, you know, it's, it has to be another webinar. Uh, but general idea that how to use this, uh, you know, retracement and, uh, you know, just keep measuring that, you know, from different angles, different areas, different lengths. And um, uh, especially when you have harmonic patterns, all those diagrams, understand them, and then you start trying to, you know, uh, find out if there's uh, a perfect calculation already for wave one, two, three, or maybe, you know, A, B, C, D, uh, or A, B, C point, and you try to catch a C point, and then from there, from C to D, just like I showed you on a Paranasi chart, that, you know, we can uh, trade all the way to the downside, uh, 4,500 pip drop. Uh, so you you can catch it. By the way, Euro Aussie just uh, I just showed you in the beginning. It is uh, it was hitting at uh, twenty three percent line, so it can make a turn. Um, you know this is the same thing is happening here. You can see here I used this fib here. This is seventy eight percent, and we went straight not thirty eight percent. We you know wobble here a little bit, but then we went up to twenty three percent line, and we are pulling back. So if we stop here and we can make a turn to the downside that would be pound getting strong and euro getting weaker okay and if that is happening then you know that pound is getting strong or euro getting weaker and then we see their charts right their individual you know euro chart and pound chart and then if that is the case if we find that yeah okay really euro is dropping pound is not doing anything or euro is not doing anything and pound is getting strong then we can trade pound pairs accordingly. Okay, and to drop this one down here, we need pound strength or euro weakness. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this chart as well. See, this is our 23% line, very, very important line. And after this, so this could be a butterfly if, you know, X, A, this is B at 78%, C at 127%, D could be 127%. Is that possible? I don't know, time will tell. Okay, so we need to play with the calculation, you know, keep playing with that. And uh, um, this is one uh, calculation, but it doesn't look possible right now, yeah, giving the Brexit condition and all that. But U.S. Uh, election will, you know, can make a big difference and, uh, you know, make the um, impossible possible. <laughs> okay, so and we have only a few days left for that. Maybe eight, nine days, right? Yeah. So I'm going to close it now and uh, don't want to mess up the recording. I hope that I explained something, you know, very end. Um, you know, and um, if you still don't understand that, we can talk about it. You know, just tell me, you know, email me and tell me that, you know, if I don't understand still, you know, I'm confused or this and that, anything, uh, any aspect of this whole thing. Uh, then I'll, you know, do another webinar and try to explain that. Okay. Any of one of you, if you don't understand anything, just, just email me and, you know, I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it again if you have to. Right. See, the, the thing is that I have, then I have to explain you the Elliott wave one day. Elliott waves, how to find them and which uh, time frame to start from, you know. That you will see them on most of those uh, more, uh, time frames, all of them. Okay. So that way you will understand and then you will be able to start measuring them, okay? Maybe, you know, during this week, I'll do an Elliott Wave basic, basic Elliott Wave uh, uh, webinar, okay? All right, so let me go now and I'll, uh, you know, convert the recording and then send out, all right? Okay, bye-bye.